The Lord is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord of the resurrection, surprise us. Open our hearts this day to the presence of Jesus Christ. Erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge us to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us, leading and guiding our steps in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, imploring Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. For our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Together, O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. On this confession, I, as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The opening hymn is, Come Thou Fountain of Every Blessing. <laughs>
O Almighty God, eternal God, now that you have assured us of the completion of our redemption through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, give us the will to show forth in our lives that we profess with our lips through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the readings of the lesson assigned for this second day of Easter, second Sunday of Easter. lesson is taken from Acts, the second chapter, verses 14, uh, verse 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The New Testament lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower of faith falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you stand please for the reading of the gospel? The Holy Gospel is written in Luke, the 24th chapter reading verses 13 to 35, where we read as follows. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? 
they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to, on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the reading of the good news. The sermon hymn is, We Are Not Ashamed. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
disciples, the two men who were on the way to Emmaus, and all the disciples for that matter, and all the people at that time who followed Jesus, they had hoped, it said, we had hoped that he was the one who was to come. But when you say, well, I hope, means that there's some doubt that can go with it. So they weren't real sure. They saw he had done great things, but you know, they had a misinterpretation of the scriptures. Jesus had to tell them some things from the scriptures that they had missed. They knew the scriptures fairly well, but they misinterpreted them. And everybody at that time was looking for a king to help them get rid of the Romans that were ruling over them. And here was a guy who comes along and he does great miracles, he has great teachings, he has power, he has a great following, everybody that's following him, except the religious leaders of that time. And all of a sudden, the religious leaders see to it that he gets crucified. Dashed their hopes, to be sure. We had hoped that he was the one who would redeem Israel. But see, they did not understand that he was the Messiah of God. And when Jesus uh, if you notice the readings that we had just a bit earlier, uh, Jesus emphasized that, that don't you know that the Messiah was promised to come? Mm -hmm. And he opened the scripture for them and then they began to understand it. And of course then it really happened when he broke bread. But, you know, the same thing that uh, was a problem for those disciples at that time can be the same thing today. We have issues today. I don't have to tell you about it, just a few of you are here, which you're only that, we're only here, a few of us, because of a 
pandemic that's out there, and it can cause great stress. We may not have even seen the end of it. But nonetheless, is there hope? And see, in the Old Testament, the word hope was kind of looking forward to something that hadn't yet happened. After Jesus rose from the dead, the hope took on a new power. Hope means trust in God, faith in God. Okay, that's what um, these disciples finally found that uh, after Jesus opened the scriptures to them, that's what they could come alive. So the thing for you and me today is, do we really know the scriptures? Do we really know the Bible? And when we read it and try to understand it, does the Holy Spirit really reveal things to us? We have to ask for that, don't we, when we get in the Bible. And how many people today are just biblically ignorant, but not you and me. We have to attend to that continually. And we have to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, reveal that. And you know he does. He shows things to us just like he did to those two guys on the way to Emmaus and to the rest of the disciples that Jesus came to on that resurrection day, that night. The Psalms are full of the word hope. And as the psalmist went through these words, that's what they were hoping for that Messiah to come that was promised to them back in the Garden of Eden. And that promise was given to them again and again through the prophets. Same thing for you and me today. We have a promise that he's coming back again. Here's some words of promise, for example, Psalm 118, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Even our government, hard as they may try, whether it be the national or the state or the local governments, hard as they may try. And they do try. And we praise God for that. We pray for them to be given good wisdom in the decisions they have to make because they're in a pretty critical situation right now. So it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 119, 58 says, I trusted your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to your word. See, God, for many years of my own life, the Lord had part of my heart. I knew about him. I went to church. I went through catechism, confirmation, all that. I was baptized as an infant and all those things. But God only had part of my heart. So I would go through the exercise of going to church and so forth, but it wasn't until he really grabbed a hold of my heart and I experienced him that I knew that he was real. And that's what Jesus did for these disciples. He opened their heart and he, and he became real to them. And that's what he wants for each one of us today, doesn't he? He wants to become real to us. On Pentecost Sunday, he became very real to those followers of his. And the result, we read that earlier in the, in the lesson, as a result of that 3,000 people, when they saw what those disciples had experienced, it got a hold of them. And they were convicted of their sin. Brethren, what shall we do, they said. And then Peter told them what they should do. They, he said, confess your sins, much like the confession that we went to earlier in the service today. And you can, we can do that at any time, and we should do it often. Just confess that we have failed. But our hope goes then beyond that. Because, again, if, if our hope begins to have some doubt creep in, then that becomes a lighter part of the teeter-totter, and the doubt pushes it up, pushes it down. And we go... As a lightweight. Some scriptures relating to hope. <clears throat> From uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Put hope of the eternal life entirely on the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Isn't it great that we get to celebrate Christ the Lord is risen. Jesus is risen from the dead. The Lord is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah! He is. And because of that now, it says we have the hope of eternal life guaranteed to us 
so we can put our hope, and that's the heavy weight on that teeter-totter, if you will. And down it goes with, hallelujah. Okay, and you've heard of Job in the Old Testament. He's, uh, they think that that was the first book that was written in the Old Testament. He said, and the difficult things that he was going through, he said, though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Now, we have some pretty tough stuff in front of us today. Can we say that with Job? Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Hallelujah. What an encouraging word. Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. And sometimes we have to keep telling ourselves that. It doesn't just happen automatically. You know, when you get busy in here and listen to that, listen to what Job is saying. Can you agree with that? Though he slay me, yet will I, <clears throat> yet will I hope in him. Several of the Psalms, like I said earlier, have that word hope. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. So every time something comes up where we want to get afraid again uh, of this pandemic or different things, maybe uh, we uh, are having difficulty making payments, uh, maybe uh, we can't find the food we need or the supplies we need or a host of other things. All kinds of disruptions in our community, maybe even in our family or in our neighborhood. But can we say to ourselves, just what it says, may your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. I'm going to have to tell myself that probably many times in the next days coming up. Probably all the way till I die. Find rest, O my soul, for in God alone my hope comes from Him. What a great statement. Find rest. I had a friend who really was going through some difficult times, and I mentioned this particular scripture to him. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone, for my hope comes from Him. He made that his life's message after that. Uh, a few years ago when he passed away, that was an important verse to him. Find rest, O my soul. Just Put my hope in God alone, for my hope comes from Him. And then <clears throat> Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in His word do I put my hope. You know, again, looking back to those two disciples that were going to Emmaus when Jesus was walking with them, they said, We had hoped. What they were really saying is, We had wished. And there's a difference between hope and wishing. Like I said before, wishing always leaves an element of doubt there, mm -hmm. which they had. Because we had hoped <coughs> that he would be the Messiah, but we doubted because it didn't happen the way we thought it should. It's funny how these things happen to us just like it did to them. Uh, when I look at myself, I really know faith-wise no better than later. Because there are many times when I face situations, I just kind of try to work them out the best I can, and then the Lord has to remind me that, have I asked Him? Have I put my hope in Him? Or have I worked the situation out myself and messed it up? So I'd have to say, to because there are people who are watching by the video cast this morning, the same applies to each one of you. So I'd say, people of grace, hope in the Lord. People of crown and glory, hope in the Lord. Yes. For with the Lord there is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem us from all of our iniquities. That's a promise. Of the Psalms because they have a lot about hope. And then another one from Psalm 147 The Lord delights in those who fear Him, in those who put their hope in His mercy. The Lord delights in you. What, what a picture. Lord, help me. Help each 
one of us to get that a reality within us, that you delight in us, and we put our hope in you. That not only do you carry us through this struggle that we're going through as a society today, but in my own personal struggles, and especially what I'm hoping for yet to come. That's the resurrection, my resurrection, and each one of us resurrection. Maybe it will happen all at the same time, or maybe if the Lord delays, it can happen one at a time with each of us. Lord, let, my, let me put my hope in you. And I would entreat you, brothers and sisters, that the word of God becomes more dear to you, especially at a time like this, at all times, but especially at a time like this, that you would avail yourself of the word of God day by day by day. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you because you need that kind of help. We need that kind of help or we'll despair. But again, that word hope, well, that teeter-totter, is despair going to be the heavy weight or is hope going to be the heavy weight? Hope in God, that is. That's the question. That's the question that we have to answer. Here's some things that I believe accompany a time like this. Maybe you've heard it too. That what can I do? What can we do in a time like this? In a pandemic that's sweeping our country and sweeping the world. What can we do? You've all heard of different things you can do. Be sure to contact other people. Call them up. See how they're doing. People maybe you haven't talked to in a long time. Help people out if you can help somebody who has a need, either with food or with supplies of one kind or another. All kinds of things like that are available. And especially showing love. Showing the love of Jesus, which is, I believe, a time that Jesus, went, that God wants to use a time like this to begin to show his love like we haven't really seen in the past. Because when everything goes well, we don't really need his. I mean, who thinks about God when everything's going well? But let some things go bad, first thing, turn to God. But here, here's some things that Paul exhorts us from, from Romans chapter 12. Love. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. What an injunction to us. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. I mean, this couldn't be more applicable than it is right now in our society, in our, as a people of God. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Just got a text this morning on the way up here that a friend of mine his mother-in-law passed away. And I uh, was just thinking, isn't that interesting? She she got, and she, she knew the Lord. But she gets to go there before I get to see him. And, uh, but anyway, it says, mourn with those who mourn. So there is a mourning that goes on. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. These are things that are doable. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Now, I almost wish he had left that out of there, but he didn't. Put it right in there. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heat burning coals of fire on his head. So do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that would be my prayer, Lord, that you would show me and each one of us how we can go about doing that which is pleasing to you. Taking advantage of of the discomfort that's surrounding us, taking advantage as a person of God, as a friend of Jesus, 
opened my eyes to see things I hadn't seen before, Lord, showing me things that, that I missed because I've been too busy with other stuff. But open my eyes and begin to see things that you put in front of me that I can minister to as a child of God. What have I missed before? Open my eyes to see that. One of the prayers that I think is really good when we think of hope, when our confidence has to rest in God because there's no other place that's worth going to, it comes in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It goes like this. It's a prayer. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit just think about that what a, what a prayer it's not a wish, it's a prayer it's a, a blessing that God wants to put upon you and me and that is that his hope, our hope in him would fill us with all joy in other words we need to be marked as a people that is not <coughs> downcast because of these, this pandemic, but have joy. You know, I heard uh, just last week, I guess it was, I was on a phone call with uh, other pastors. We were talking to one of the men from Samaritan's Purse up in New York City, you know, where they've been really having a ravage of that pandemic. And uh, they had constructed or set up a hospital, I guess, on... Um, Central Park. Is that the name of the big park? Central Park. And um, he said just their presence had created such a change of environment. He said people, when they see them, they want them to pray for them. These different uh, ministers that are going around, they want them to pray for them. And he said it, it just turns the attitude of one of death to one of joy. One of rejoicing. He said, in fact, just yesterday, uh, 14 people went home. They were healed. And that's the kind of good news that we can bring to those that are in difficulty. Just being Jesus to them. And uh, that's, that's what our prayer is. And I have a prayer here for a time of pandemic. Let me just read that to you. It's, I can close with that prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all that mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors. And cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness through Jesus Christ. Again, I repeat the blessing that God gives you gives to us from Romans 15, 13. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God grant that to each of us. Now it's time for the offering. And let me say this. There are several ways to, because we have an opportunity to share in the work of the kingdom through our contributions. If you want to contribute online, let me just read these things to you. Uh, go to Grace's webpage, which is glcconcordnc.org. GLC is standing for Grace Lutheran Church Concord NC.org and click the donate the donate now button. If you want to mail an offering in, mail it to Grace Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 891. 891. P.O. Box. Concord, North Carolina, 28025. For crown and glory to make an offering. It can be mailed to Crown and Glory Lutheran Church. The P.O. Box is 1384. 1384. Salisbury, North Carolina. Zip 
1-800-273-1845. Post office box again is 1384 Salisbury, North Carolina, 28145. Thank you, eternal God, for giving us new life. Help us to live according to your spirit and willingly serve you and our fellow human beings with all that we are and all that we have. Amen. We pray together the prayer. No, a musical selection. I'm sorry. Let's have it.